All right, so the good folks over at Arteria have just released their new KeyLab MK3 series MIDI controllers. I actually got the 49, and we're gonna go ahead and go over some of the key features, and I'm gonna tell you guys how I really feel about it. So let's go ahead and get to it. Bolo! All right, before we get started, if you guys wanna go ahead and pick up this new KeyLab MIDI controller, I do have a direct link in my video description, so go ahead and click on that and check it out. And if you guys need some other equipment for your studio, go ahead and click the other link in the description that will take you over to zounds.com. They have a whole bunch of stuff on the site and they have a whole bunch of stuff on the site that does not require a credit or background check. All you just need is a credit or debit card hooked to the account and you can make monthly installments on most of the equipment on the site. Now it's not everything, but it's a good amount of stuff on the site. So if you guys need to go ahead and get anything for your studio, any type of equipment, any type of cables or whatever, go ahead and click my link in the description and head over to zounds.com today. Now, one thing Arteria is going to do is they are going to make some really dope sounds and they're going to release some MIDI controllers. It just seems like the other day I just did a review on the 88 key, uh, key Lab Essentials uh, MIDI controller. Apparently, a lot of people are hyped up about these boards and uh, I can say they're not bad, but there's one thing I don't like about this board in particular. Now, the one question that I always try to answer is who is this board for? And to be honest, why should you get it? There's so many other controllers out here that you can use, but why should you get this particular MIDI controller? Well, you know Bolo is gonna keep it real with you. Now, the MIDI controller is cool, but it's really not about the MIDI controller to me, it's all of the extras that you get with it. And we're definitely gonna talk about all the extras, but let's talk about some of the features of the board first. Number one, the build quality of the board is actually pretty dope. The key bed of the board actually feels very good. And even though this is a 49 key controller, they now have 12 pads on here and they have a full color display. Now it comes equipped with just about everything that you would expect on a really good MIDI controller, and it integrates very nice with the Arteria software plugins. Now even though that this is one of their flagship MIDI controllers, I do like the fact that I did not have any problems hooking this up to just about any piece of software, and I was actually very excited to see that this thing hooked up to my MPC standalone unit with no problems, and it connected to my Machine Plus with no problems as well. And the reason why I was excited about those two is because I did not need an external power source to have this thing running with the standalone units. Now in the back of the unit, this thing has a USB-C port to connect to your computer or to connect to other MIDI devices. It has a power jack just in case you need some power. It has the old school MIDI in and out ports on the back of it. And it has the inputs for the sustain pedal and expression pedal and the aux in jack as well. Now what is the difference between this and maybe the Key Lab Essential. To be honest, it's not really much to me. It's just me out of 8 billion people in the world. This thing is actually very lightweight. I was actually very surprised about that. The build quality is very good. It is not like the Essential keyboard, which is much lighter and they use cheaper material. The pads, the buttons, the knobs, everything, they feel really good. The sliders are cool. I think for what you get, they're okay. I don't think they're the most durable over time, but they're cool. Like I said, it's it's a cool board. But to me, it's not about the board in a sense. It's about the other stuff that comes with the board. Now, what is that, Bolo? It is the included software. Now, this thing comes with Analog Lab Pro. If you guys don't know what that is, you probably have been sleeping under a rock. It comes with the Mini V, which is a Moog emulation VST, the Piano V, which is actually a super dope piano collection, and it comes with augmented strings, which is a dope VST instrument as well, but it's not just your typical string VST. You can actually take it and modulate the stuff inside of it. It can get really crazy. It's actually very dope. And Arteria is throwing in their reverb plugin as well, which that is actually very dope too. And they're giving you Ableton Lite, if you guys are you know interested in Ableton like that. And they're giving you another VST instrument called the Gentleman by Native Instruments. Yeah. And they're throwing in two extra subscriptions to Melodics and Loop Cloud. Now with all of that, with the controller, I can justify the price. Now if it was just a controller by itself, 
Mm, I don't know if I could have did that. Now, I know some of you guys are probably curious about the dimensions of the board. Is it pretty big? Is it small? What is it? Well, I actually have a Argosy Halo desk and this board fits perfectly on my desk. It is not bigger than some of the previous flagship MIDI controllers that they had. They kind of packed everything in here, but still gave us those flagship features. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I forgot to mention, and I know you guys, you know, over the past couple years have been really into this, but it does have aftertouch in it for all you aftertouch people out there. Yes, the board does have aftertouch on it. Now, with all that being said, let's go ahead and hook this thing up to Logic Pro and let me show you guys some other features that are included inside of the board. All right, so we're in Logic Pro right now and I have the Arteria uh, KeyLab 49 MK3 hooked up to uh, Logic and we're gonna go through some of the features in here. Now, one thing that I do like about this new uh, controller is that it has a new screen right here. It's not super huge, it's not super small, but it is in color, if that makes a difference. But it's actually pretty cool. What you can do is you can control your mixer, you can control your actual uh, DAW, and you can control all the stuff with the Arteria software as well. So what we can do right now is right now we're in Mixer. If I wanna go ahead and click on my plugin, all I do is click on this right here and Analog Pro pops right on up and actually I have it pulled on this right here, which is cool. And if I wanna close this out, all I do is just press that and it closes out. What I can do now is I can actually select what I wanna do. So if I take this little toggle wheel and I select it, as you guys can see, it will scroll between the tracks. If I have this on its mixer setting as well, it will control certain parameters depending on how I have this set. So like certain parameters control certain things. Like this one right here controls the overall DAW volume. So you can go up and down as you guys can see it's moving up there and it controls the overall volume of the actual DAW. This particular fader right here controls the master volume. So if I go ahead and move this up and down, it controls the master volume of everything. So you can see that moving. Now this particular fader right here controls the track volume right here. So we just move this right here and it will control the track volume. And the cool thing about it is even though that we're on track two, since we're in mixer mode, this fader right here controls the volume on track one because we're in mixer mode. So if we move track one, that moves. And if we're on track two, that moves. Kind of cool. And if we added another track, and as long as we're in mixer mode, then track three will correspond to track three and then four will correspond to that. And then you can go ahead and use this kind of like, you know, how the old school people used to do it. So another thing that they have on here is they have the 12 pads, which I talked about before. And the pads actually work pretty cool. As you guys can hear, they're cool. They have a pretty nice feel to them. And if you wanna go up and down the octave, all you gotta do is hit this little bank button right here. And then you can toggle up and down through the different banks. You can go down. So that's actually pretty cool. Now, as you guys can see, when I pressed all those buttons, the velocity was fixed. It's very easy to set the velocity in here. Just go to settings, then go to global, go to global curves, click on that. Once you're in the global curve setting, you can go ahead and select all the different velocity settings in here, and then you're done. Now, let's go back into KeyLab right now, and let's just show a few other features that it has inside of this board. Now, we have this sound right here. but let's just say I don't know how to play in a scale. What I can do is go right here to scale and I actually can set this right now, which is set on E uh, minor right now. And what you can do is if you wanna go in here and like, like change stuff up, just go ahead and hold down scale right there. So we're in here right now, I have it set on E and I have the type as a minor. So if I play E minor, I can play it, but if I hit the wrong key, what's gonna happen is watch this. It's gonna play the same note. And if I play the wrong note. So basically it keeps you in the scale. So it doesn't matter what key I press, it's going to stay in scale. So let's say for instance, I want to change this root to a, a D sharp minor or a, a E flat minor, I guess you want to call it. So if I press the wrong note,
it's going to keep you inside of the scale. So that's actually very dope. Now, another dope feature that this boy has is, of course, the arpeggiator. You can go right in here and turn the arpeggiator on. And of course, if you want to make any changes, just press and hold down on it. And then now we can have an arpeggiator on here. And then you can make all types of different settings in here. I can take this upper octave if I want to. They have a gate setting on here. I can turn this gate setting down and it'll like, it, 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 it won't flow. It'll just kind of be like a more of a stabby effect. And with this particular sound, it's kind of harder to do it because it kind of drags a little bit, but you can do that on here as well. And then you have different modes on here as well. So you can actually go in here and do like inclusive mode right here. Or what you can do is you can press random right here and just roll the dice. So you can roll the dice and then you can do that as well. And then now the cool thing that we can do is since we're in logic, I can go ahead and just turn on my auto quantize right now. That's turned on. And then I can turn on my metronome so I can hear what's going on. And then I can just go ahead and press record. And just like that, it recorded it. And now, as you guys can see, I did a what uh, four bar loop. I can actually on the board, as long as I have it set up here on my uh, DAW, I can just hit right here and hit the loop on and it automatically loops what I have it set. So I can just press play and turn that off. That's cool. So I have not only just the control of what's going on with the actual Arterial software, I have the full DAW control as well. So now let's go ahead and go out of art. And now we have another dope feature called the chord function on here. So now we can go ahead and go to chord and then we can go ahead and just press and create a chord right now. And then now we have a chord. So we have different chord settings on here. And right now we have a major chord setting. And if we press it, we can press any key and it'll make a chord. And as you guys can see, it has a little bit of a strum to it because they have a strum part on here. So I can click on this and turn the strum up and watch this. And then you have different parameters that you can uh, put on here. You have a spread. So I can either use the spread that they have or I can decide what type of spread I want. I can go in here and say I want a spread of four keys. So I want four different keys to play. Or I can even say, uh, let's just say we want to do seven keys. And it'll play... <laughs> those chords right there and then we can go back right here and then we can turn this strum actually down we'll put this on like two and then we play it so it's cool i'm not really a person that used the chord function like that but it works it's cool now another cool feature that this boy has is this hold feature right here now if you guys do not have a foot pedal and you want to try to get those notes to hold a little bit longer you can just turn this on now i have a piano pulled up right now and this is how it sounds now if i turn on the hold function watch this If I turn it off, turn it back on. So that's actually very cool as well. Now, last but not least is controlling the plugin from the actual board. And one thing I did notice between different programs between Logic and Cubase is these were assigned a little bit different, but you can actually go in and assign these however you want. So right now, if I want to go ahead and change a few things in here, I can change the brightness and this is the uh, 
the pot that it has for that right now. And then if I want to change like the resonance or whatever, this is the one that's assigned for that. And then if I want to change like uh, the symphonic resonance for this particular sound, I can go ahead and change that as well. So you can go ahead and do everything inside of the board without not even leaving the board. And that way you don't have to be reaching over and grabbing the mouse for everything. So you can do a lot of stuff inside of the board. And it's actually pretty cool you can do it that way. So, you know, with the board and with everything that comes with it, it's pretty cool. The only thing I don't like about this board is it does not work with Studio One. Now, you guys know I have been using Studio One for a long time, and I actually really kind of like the program. But this board does not integrate with Studio One for some reason. The KeyLab Essentials, they all work with Studio One. I can actually go in and actually program all the transport controls and everything. On this particular board, I have not been able to use the transport controls in Studio One, which is a bummer. But they do have scripts for Logic Pro, Cubase, FL Studio, uh, Bitwig, and Ableton. And so, you know, it works fine with those programs, but it would be dope to be able to use this with Studio One, especially the transport controls. But for some reason, I can't even get it to work. I guess it's because I'm making this video before it even officially drops. Maybe they'll come with an update after it officially drops on the market to where I can use it with Studio One, because that'll be very dope, Arteria. All right, so with all that being said, this is actually a very good MIDI controller. It actually comes with a lot of extras with it, and it actually comes in two color schemes. It comes in a white color and a black color. So if you guys want to go ahead and pick this up, go ahead and click that link in the description. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys learned something from it. And like I always say, peace out.